First bite. Welcome back to the tree house and soon to be the lake, everybody. We're doing some crappie fishing today. First good cold front, it was in the 30s last night. Ooh, I bet them big bucks were moving too. Usually mid to late October, we start getting these cold fronts in Texas and our fishing starts getting a little better. You know, it's been 90s a lot. The water's been, you know, mid to high 70s, 80s. Now it's gonna start dipping, low 70s. That's where I really like to start bass fishing again and then crappie fishing. White bass gets phenomenal. And I'm going with Mr. Turkla today, Mr. Rob. Haven't fished with him in a while. I've always wanted to uh, to try to get him on some crappie. So we're gonna try to do that today. I don't know if he's patient enough for it, but we're gonna test it. So this is my first time actually holding baits in a package. That feels good, y'all. So, you know, sometimes crappie baits, like half of them you gotta throw out because their tails are all nasty and gnarled and they're not gonna work right. These are gonna work right. They're gonna work so right. <sighs> of course, you know they smell good. Two inch bumping bug right there. One of the greatest times to be an outdoors one, y'all. I love the fall. Haven't been on the water in a while. It's very calm out here, it's nice. Saw a guy at the boat dock. Caught a crappie, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna do a little island right here, wait for the rod. Should be here any minute. Probably gonna hit some bridges and then just look for some brush. First bite. The other one looks a little different. It is. Feel good. Rob Diddy. Looking great, man. It's chilly out here, man. Is that hoodie available? When's that thing dropping? Uh, I think it's in mid-November. I think, mid -nov? It, I think it's mid-November. I love it, man. <sighs> Look at these, though. Look at those. Okay, yeah, yeah. We never got reels in packaging. They just, like, sent us in plastic bags. <laughs> they look good, don't they? <sighs> Are you Gold excited? looks. Yeah. Gold looks like you you got a Rolex or something. <laughs> so look at the way it comes packaged though. Let's see it. it see up. it. So Let's do it. This. Live. Doing it live. A little uh, laser cut foam yeah, actually, packaging. Suction cupped in there. This is all wrapped sick, up. Dude. That's your crappie dangling reel right there, baby. Yeah. I have a little fun with them. Love to see it. So these are uh, these are now available. These are available, and I think right now they're saving. What do they save? I don't even know what code you use nowadays. Guggen. Find a code. Find, <laughs> it doesn't matter what code you use. You yeah. can save temper. I think the thing is like fifty percent off apparel and ten percent off everything it's else. It's huge. It's, it's like huge right now. Yeah. So. It is huge. And uh, remind everybody about the the truck. The truck. Oh yeah, the truck. So every five dollars that you guys spend on the Guggen store, you get to enter a giveaway to win a 2021 Chevy LTZ, which is actually over there with Lojo and the boys right now. But that will be given away at the end of the year. Every $5 you spend on the website gets you an entry. So if you buy one of these, you get like 20 entries or something like that. So I'm gonna get one of them uh, sweatshirts as soon as they're available. Yeah, these things are nice. <laughs> Rob always gets the good, the good stuff first. So I get a little sneak peek. So uh, 
I have something you don't have, though, Rob. I've got the crappie baits. I've got to show. I have the crappie. Baits. The, yeah, I got I got one for you. It's been my dream to get Rob on a crappie someday, and I think we might actually do it. We got one in the box right now, and my goal is to try to get five today, and make a little dinner for tonight, and um, we're gonna get to work. So, got the reels. I'm gonna show you guys some of the baits that we're gonna be using, and we'll get to work. Let's go. All right, y'all. So we got we got bridges. They're great. I've also got rip wrap. Um, you know, my first couple of crappie I've caught off just an isolated little rock pile. You know, some lakes like this one that's got a ton of rocks. They seem to relate to it really well. Other lakes, it's you know heavy brush, deep little rip wrap, 17 foot right here. So I'm going to take this little snacky. And I couldn't get anything. I just hooked a bass right when Rob was coming up too. I've got a um, eighth ounce because I, I like a little more weight when I'm throwing the, the snacky because it slows it down. Oh my gosh, dude, that was a huge bass. That was like a five pound bass right there. It's usually how it goes on a crappie fish. I catch bass or I bass fish, I catch nothing. Good day for a cruise. A Louisville cruise. Oh yeah, that's an absolute hammer crappie bite. He was way up there. How do you feel about it? I feel good. He's definitely gonna make a good steak. He's gonna get in that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah look at this baby. Oh, oh my gosh, this is a giant. How do you feel about that? Man? I mean, this is a whopper, dude. <laughs> Probably one of my biggest. Louisville crappies ever. Really? I'm scared to boat flip him. You want to pick him up? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Look at that whopper. That thing was up there on the rocks and probably like seven foot, just like a just like a fall bass chasing Chad. Look at that slab. That's gonna be good in the skillet. Get a little bump. All right, that's all you got to do. Threat, threaten to leave. Just wanted to start with that one. Okey doke. That one right there. Big boy. Come on, big, big rogue. Oh. Oh shoot, is that a bass or a crappie? I don't know. That's a crappie, they're moving up on that point. They hit it right when it hit the water. Right there. Really? Yeah. I don't know if this is a crappie. I think it is. Oh yeah, it's a, oh no, it's, it's a, a large mouth. Yeah. It right. wasn't a full jump. Spotted bass? It's gone, yeah. Yeah, those fly up nice too. Oh yeah, I'm glad I put the bigger weight on. I think cast weight on. I can't tell you how many bass I've had on these little snackies though. Like I've caught some big ones. I think my biggest is a five. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, just got third crappie We've got two absolute slabs and we just rolled up to a bridge never fished before and uh, just noticed that these fish they're sitting on these pilings and they don't really want to come out to chase I just got lucky getting one on the little snacky swimmer but they're sort of sitting up under this uh, deal here sort of sitting right there they don't want to move so I've had one chase it and then another one I just swam real real slow and he grabbed it but what I think they really want right now is just a bait to sit there so I'm gonna take a little bumping bug or get Rob to get a bumping bug on here we're gonna to try to get on top of them and then just uh, try to watch them eat it so let's get a little bumping bug on do some work 
those fish are right on the, the corner right there. And you basically, you don't, you don't want to even do that. Like, yeah. yeah. Basically you want to try to float it over their head. Yeah. Like a horse and carrot. Horse and carrot. The horse and carrot method. You get bumped? Yeah. Lift, lift. Yeah, there you go. Easy, 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 easy. Oh my God, it's amazing. Oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> It's a mega Bobby. I was like, easy. Take him easy. That is easy. <laughs> that is a mega. That's a mega, dude. Oh, I promise you there's some slabs out there. <laughs> Look at that thing. What is this? He probably just floated your bait, right? Like, he just... What is that? Uh, it's, what in the world is that? It's a future toad. God. I literally catch a 14. And then <laughs> that was like a 7. Because, uh, you oh, you want him? Oh, nice. God, it's a, it's a there we it's go. A I think he's a keeper. You think so? I don't know. Ten. Ten, he's in. Ten is in. Ten, I, he hits the pan. I knew there was one right there. He's hitting the pan. Huh? Absolute sandwich. Glad I could feed your wife. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. Hey, I, I've accomplished my goal today. Yeah. Can contributed to the creel. There we go. Big one? Big Something. One. Oh, that thing feels oh, good. Oh, no! I feel good about it. No work. No tripod today. Apologize. That is the fifth one. A fate. We haven't even hit our little brush pile over here yet. It's dropping that one in for a little. Dropping a deuce. In you go, bud. All right, guys, successful mission with Lunkers. Uh, got them on a few crappie, we got our five. Got some tasties, just out here for a couple hours. And bumping bugs and the snackies. All right, guys, quick rundown on crappie baits. We got our crappie on ice right now. We're fixing to fillet them. Take them up to the kitchen. OSG is going to do a blackened recipe. It's going to be delicious. There's really four main crappie baits that we're launching. This is going to be somewhere around Black Friday. I've heard a couple of different dates. So somewhere around there. If you've watched my videos for a while, you've probably seen me use a lot of these. But um, the first one is the Dangle Dart. And the Dangle Dart is, is designed to basically do, not do much in the water. Uh, and that is a lot of times what crappie gravitate to. They like little movements, uh, you know, little movements of your rod tip up and down, maybe dead sticking. Uh, and when they are on that mode, which is basically like all summer and anytime there's a cold front, um, this is the bait I throw on and I've probably caught the most amount of crappie on this. And uh, when you got to get a vertical presentation going, this is the jam. When I want a little bit different variation of that, maybe the water's more stained. Um, I'm trying to catch a bigger one, something with a little bit more profile. Um, I go with the bump and bug. So it's a modified bandito bug. It's got more of like a grub style body, but those tails kick out and they do like that. As you know, it's a really compact bandito bug basically. So around brush, bumping it, you can sort of swim it. Uh, it's awesome. And that's, this is what we were using today to fish on the uh, little bits of brush and the posts on the bridges. And of, of course, the snacky swimmer. This is basically a very small, saucy style swimmer, but more elongated. And uh, it, it fits a, a crappie jig in it very nicely, holds on to it. Um, the tail action is incredible for such a small bait. And you know, these are in clamshells, so the tails actually work. Worked phenomenally. Um, I've caught the most amount of bass on, on this uh, out of all the crappie baits. Um, everything eats these. I like just fan casting, searching with these, put it on a, a 16th ounce jig head, throw it down the shoreline. Uh, when the crappie are like moving away from cover and they're just kind of cruising, uh, this is an awesome bait to throw. Sometimes I'll throw it on a little bladed um, jig head but a lot of times I just throw it straight on a straight jig head and it works great and then that's in a two and a two and a half 
And then another one that I swim sometimes, a little different profile is your classic grub. This is the chubby grubby. There's times where they want a grub. I like to throw this one on an underspin ahead, swim it by cover, you know, swim it by the brush piles, uh, whatever. You can just work it on a jig head as well, but I mainly just swim these when they're wanting that kind of swing and it puts out a, a much bigger presence in the water. This has our uh, Mondo style tail. So the, the V Ridge on the back, it kicks a lot. I mean, you can move this very, very slow um, and still get movement out of it. And I think that's where our baits really stand out is that slow movement and still getting action on the bait, which is pretty important when you're crappie fishing. And that's the rundown on them. We got some great colors, uh, colors for stain, dark water, you know, your pinks, uh, your chartreuse blends, and then colors for clear water as well. Some, some of them you've seen in our bass lineup of course, the monkey milk, you know, um, pearl pepper and all that that good stuff. My favorite color for clear water is natural. I mean, this for bass, it's amazing, but I've just found crappie fishing with that bait right there, that color. Natural is awesome. If any of you are looking to get into crappie fishing, uh, I think it's awesome. I, I love doing it. I, I, I really like blending bass fishing and crappie fishing because they end up in the same places a lot of times and it's really fun to fish for both but the cold months are really great so if you want to stock up on some crappie stuff for the cold months uh it gets you a bunch of chances to win the truck googlesquad.com all right walk us through the process of making one of these tasties mm. Well, you love blackened seasoning. Um, and so to make blackened seasoning, you really just need paprika. I throw in some oregano, white pepper, black pepper, salt, and a little bit of sugar. Ooh, a mm. pro tip. Yeah. And then you really just need butter. Taste butter. I just like a little bit of that burnt, like, hot on there. Just mm. the outside. Mm. A, little, a little bit of crisp. Mm -hmm. And you break into that nice, succulent, juicy white meat there. I mean, that looks pretty good. It's going to be great. And then you've got this awesome side, little, little side deal there. Yes, I did a little uh, Mexican street corn. It's cream. There's some cheese in there. There's some uh, borson cheese in there. Mm. Good. I know. You always ask for grits. But I, I love like bringing home crappie and there's like, there's just a new recipe all the time. <laughs> all the time. It's fantastic. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at them little crispy flavor marks on there. That's what I'm talking about. That's that what I like. you like it? Okay, yeah. well this is how I like it. The light, the light I know. brown. And this is how you like it, the crispies. It's more concentrated seasoning. Oh, you get that little, little bump. Sometimes it's a little too much. A little seasoning bump. How many days a week would you say that we eat wild game? Mm. Five out of seven days of the week. Yeah, it's pretty close. And by the sixth day, I'm craving some chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Every time we don't have wild game, I'm like, chicken, please, some chicken. No, uh, we just, we, uh, this is also that time of year where you're trying to clear out the freezer a little bit and make some room. Uh, we don't have actually a whole lot of elk left. Cheers, Cheers to wild game. Nope. Got it. Show the folks at home how we do it here at the, the rack of the household. All right, you like the Krispies? You know I do. Of course, I, you gotta give me one of them 14 inches in there too. Okay, I'll give you one of these big ones. I worked hard, I worked hard for them. All right. Let's check that out. Now. A little avocado. You know whose kitchen this is. Oh my goodness. Look at this. There you go. Look at that, y'all. Isn't that awesome? You already know that is going to taste good. You don't have to fry crappie every time. I love me some Golden Krispies, but I like cooking them like this too. There's a bunch of different ways. Another one I haven't tried yet, but I really want to try, I say me, but really OSG, she works her magic, is trying some uh, crappie cakes. Taking some, maybe next time I'll go out and catch a bunch of smaller ones that are nice and tender, those little like, you know, 10 and a half, 11 inches, and then kind of mash those up and make some cakes with them, basically like a crab cake. I think those would be awesome. So we'll try that 
on our next crappie run, but I'm gonna go enjoy this now. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video on the water. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's gonna get cold here soon. We're gonna be back in the deer woods and the pig woods, trying to get some other wild game to put on the table. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you.